Hey, yo, what up, folks? How's it going? Greetings, salutation, good afternoon, slash good evening. Konnichiwa and kabawa. Giga desuka, me nasa, and oheo, goisamas. Hachime, mashite, Mr. Avenger here. Or just call me Mr. M.A. or Money Son. Or you can just call me Money Avenger, the multitasker, the one and only. And welcome back to another reaction video at your service. What's up, guys? How's it going? I'm doing okay. Just relaxing and uh, sleepy. And I guess it's that I'm getting a little older, but not there yet. I mean, one more year than, than I will be as an old man. But other than that, it's been pretty good. Not a whole lot in the fact that that is my day off. But um, I did hear some interesting for Deadpool 3 that's going to be coming out next year. Is that uh, there will be adding two X-Men villains, which is that uh, it's confirmed that Sabretooth and Toad is going to be added. So this is going to be fun. And I can't wait to see this because I I I'm, I I will give in high hopes that, that that this this third movie is gonna be good, and um and I'm pretty sure that that the it's been already confirmed that, that Randy Orton is gonna stay on SmackDown and which is that it's gonna be uh, an unfinished business and uh, Randy is gonna be attend to uh to keep his promise. So with that said, I think it's that time for me to get get with uh with some reactions because uh. The new episode or new video from Death Battle. <clears throat> Excuse me. It's time for Death Battle. Okay, yeah, I know. It's it still needs some little work on it, but um, it's Goku versus Superman, which I like to call this one a third bout between these two because let, let's. Let, let, I don't think it doesn't need introduction because it's already been it's explained about of their origins and that the uh, it's quite similar but it's just entirely different from one perspective from another and they're both strong it's just that the difference is that that goku is a saiyan and superman is a kryptonian and pretty much they have like the different abilities and uh almost uh quite as a, a godlike but uh it's just that they both are very of a have a positive vibe and it brings a of a positive message that for every fans out there, and not to mention that, that I created a, po a poll that was last night to see which of these two are gonna win, and all I get is the both Goku and Superman uh, have a forty one percent on each of them, and the draw is thirty seven percent. I was like, okay. I, I, it's it's just it's just so in, in, inevitable that that these two can can never you know have the means to, to kill one another because it's because of the of their group because of their morals. I, I, it's it's un it's it's, un, it's it's understandable, but uh, it's kind of getting uh, ridiculous. So today, this has got to be a definitive win to see which of the two is going to be walking out of here alive, and uh, I hope that, that there won't be a, a fourth one, because if it does, it, it'll, it'll, it'll never get to old, and, this is, and, and I'm getting old too, so there's that. So let's go ahead and get, get right to it, and let's begin, shall we? And uh, be sure to uh, not only the leave a likes, but also subscribe to this channel, and uh, be sure to have your notifications turned on for every new video that's going to be posted on this channel from your truly, your friendly neighborhood reactor man, the soul of the Japanese brother man, the king of metal slash J metal reactor is what I do. It may not be as 100% perfect, but it is the best effort that I can do for every single one of you out there because this is what I love to do. So let's begin, let's get started, but mostly time to react. Go. Son Goku, Superman. It's time to answer the ultimate question, and we're taking it all into play. We're examining yep. Superman's extensive mainline comic book canon. Given Dragon Ball Super's contentious continuities, we'll include all three just to be thorough, plus Dragon Ball Heroes. He's oh, okay, okay. okay. so with Dragon and Ball it's Heroes, our job to okay, analyze okay, the cool. weapons, armor, and skills to find out who would win a death battle. Okay, it looks like a, a new animation also. Far away, in an enchanted land, an old master found a boy and marveled at his uncommon strength. 
This is the story of Son Goku. Chances are, if you've watched some localized anime, uh, you, you can think this guy. <laughs> Inspired by martial arts films and his wife's oh, interest in no, Chinese hey. culture, Akira Toriyama crafted the story and the character and that, was an image that would of define go, generations to come. Dragon East Ball! Versus the, Kakarot versus was born West. a low-class Saiyan on the planet Vegeta. And, no, I think it was like a... Um, destruction by Frieza East and was Heroes, wasn't it? by happy old Grandpa Gohan. Not just raised, but trained. Gohan began Goku's teaching in oh. martial arts, oh, which he would the, find to be his true uh, calling under the uh, guidance uh, saying, of Master Roshi. Uh, Specifically, how, how he learned the Kami Sen and Ryu the style, which focuses on discipline and tenacity. Uh, he's, both okay, so he's 40 years old. Care. The more he learned, the more he wanted to improve. This little low-class monkey boy would prove that hard work and dedication can beat raw talent. Within just a few years, he was so strong, the only worthy teachers left were gods. And a talking cat, but mostly yeah. gods. When you're training to dodge lightning, you know you're a few leagues over everyone else. He did have a slight advantage. Saiyans are naturally superhuman. They also take Nietzsche's famous words, what doesn't kill you makes you stronger, very, very literally. It's almost literally unfair how much of definition. a boost in power they get after they're hurt. While Saiyans like Vegeta may have abused this trait, it suits Goku. No matter how many times you knock him down, he will get back up stronger than before. It helps that he knows so many cool combat moves, like the Kamehameha! An incredibly powerful technique that focuses one's key into a single point for a devastating beam. So challenging, it took Roshi decades to master, but Goku got it in like five seconds. It's incredibly versatile with over 50 different variations. For example, Goku can curve the beam after firing, or even shoot it from his feet. But unlike most Saiyans, he doesn't just use key to blow shit up. Moves like the Solar Flare, Energy Landmine, and God Bind require a lot more strategy and planning. Because while Goku isn't exactly book smart, he is a genius when it comes to martial arts. He doesn't just train to conquer his opponents, but to conquer himself. He's also got some different moves, like trapping you in a rice cooker. Well, pretty much any <laughs> container could be used for the Mafuba ceiling technique. Then there's Kaioken, a.k.a. Instant Steroids. Goku's <laughs> multiplied his power by 20 with it before, and in a movie, he even got it up to times okay. 100. Okay, technically, it, it kind of is, but not. The spirit bomb is but it's never been, you know, strongest attack confirmed that requires of, of the, that's time. the name Unlike of it. Unlike Instant Transmission, which is a teleport that's the instant. The way it works is Goku detects another person, like a sort of beacon, then teleports to their location by launching himself through an alternate dimension where time stands still. Yes, according to the Daisenshu guidebook, it's a dimension hop. You can actually yeah. see this in between space in some movies and games. And the dubs wanted us to think that's, it shot Goku's molecules around that's at from the Silly English. But it does more than that. In fact, early dubs of Dragon Ball Z tried to rewrite Goku as a Superman figure. Even his uh, famous uh, speech uh, on Namek uh, about being the light in the darkness was originally about him coming to terms with his Saiyan. If there's any scene that deserves the word epic, it's when he went gold. Super Saiyan and its sequels all have official power multipliers, but they threw us for a loop by turning Goku into a god. Super Saiyan God certainly changed things up. Goku gained Divine Ki, a pure form of Ki unspoiled by mortal hands. Unlike normal Ki, it can't be detected and appears to have healing properties. Kinda like Senzu beans. Did you know one Senzu has so much healing juice it can regenerate a person's lost limbs? Um... <laughs> They're missing out. God Goku reached a level of power that could compete with the greatest of deities, nearly shattering the whole universe with a single clash on his first go. Dragon Ball's cosmology is unique. This model is said to be an accurate depiction of Universe 7, but there's a wrinkle there. When all of humanity went to heaven, because Boo went Boo Zerk, Fidel commented that heaven is just as large as a universe, and the Daisenshu backs her up. And, uh, that's heaven, big planet. Yeah. So let's scale things up with that in mind. Doing so would make Universe 7 over 1,500 times larger than our own observable universe. Okay, okay. And Goku could destroy that much the first time he went good. And he didn't lose that power. He learned how to use it even better, even in base form. Now, imagine how much stronger he became when he stacked Super Saiyan on Super Saiyan God and became Super Saiyan Blue. Super Saiyan God, Super Saiyan. Yeah, not saying that. Or after he trained with some almighty angels. Or when he perfected the 
blue hairdo and stack Kaioken on top of that. Goku has certainly performed great feats with God Key, breaking through Hit's time stop by forcing himself into the future, holding off Infinite Zamasu, who was a sentient timeline, defeating Jiren, who shook the entire world of Void by just walking. He even tried out Hakai, the destruction god move that nopes you out of existence. Your being and your soul erased from all of time and space, culminating in his greatest form, Ultra, Ultra Instinct. Instinct. Chrome Goku isn't a normal transformation, it's a state of mind. Ultra Instinct is the highest peak of martial arts, subconsciously making optimal choices because you're in the zone doing without thinking. Something Goku has always been trained to do. Technically, it can be used in any form, but when perfected, Autonomous Ultra Instinct makes you untouchable. No matter what comes his way, Goku will automatically dodge, block, and counter to the best of his ability, even pushing his body well beyond his physical limits. So far beyond, in fact, Ultra Instinct can summon a massive okay, avatar now to defend that him I have his not own seen body. Man, good that Lord. sounds really intense. It is, which is why he's developed incremental versions of it for specific uses. It's extremely difficult to maintain the full form for long. Until you get to Dragon Ball Here Heroes, aka Dragon Ball Fan Fiction Gone Kaioken times a thousand. <laughs> While technically a different continuity, CC Goku is functionally a stand in for the mainline Goku. His history yeah. and powers are the same, making his story just as much of a what if scenario as the multiple super continuities. The only real difference is Toriyama's not really involved. This Goku used yeah, even though he's not to involved with this, time and dimensions. but uh, he this is considered as a fan service. He defeated Dark King Fu, who is gonna rewrite the entire universe. Hell, this series even makes GT cool. Xeno Goku can break space time just by going Super Saiyan 4. Looking back at that goofy monkey boy chopping wood and punching dinosaurs, it's almost overwhelming to think about how far Goku has come, how much he's had to face. But no matter the challenge, he takes it head on and pushes through, showing everyone everywhere how to go even further beyond faster than a speeding bullet more powerful than a locomotive it's a bird it's a plane it's superman geez just a locomotive people in the 40s needed bigger imaginations born on the far well. off world of krypton the infant cal l was sent to earth by his parents narrowly escaping krypton's destruction raised by farmers as clark kent he eventually became superman Champion of the oppressed, the man of tomorrow. If you've only seen the movies, forget them. Comic book Clark's not the perfect Boy Scout. And he's definitely not Jesus. Wait, weren't the guys who made him Jewish? Jerry Siegel and Joe Schuster were sons of Jewish immigrants and grew up in a time when anti-Semitism went largely unchallenged. And then that ugly mustache showed up. Understandably seeking escape from some truly terrifying horrors, the pair created Superman to be a simple solution to overwhelming problems. A hero who could defeat any to evil by a, just a, a punching symbol it. Of Hell hope. yeah, that's how I live my life. After almost no, nine don't. decades, Superman has been many things. At the core, his story is one of a refugee, a child who lost his home, left to the mercy of alien people. This new world accepted him, raised him, gave him a new home, because helping others in need is the right thing to do. That's why he became a superhero, the first superhero. Everything's gotta start somewhere, but he was the first one to really take off. I mean, not literally, it took a while actually before he learned how to fly. In fact, when right. Clark discovered his Kryptonian heritage, he struggled to accept it and subconsciously developed mental blocks, severing him from his true power, which he would uncover throughout his life. He's strong enough to shoulder press the weight of the earth for five days straight, or crush coal into perfectly cut diamond. That's not how that works. He's fast enough to reach the edge of the universe in seconds, or even break the bonds of infinity. Wait, he can do all that, but Batman can punch him out? Really? You're probably thinking of Elseworlds stories outside main canon like Dark Knight Returns. Oh. It's a good question though. Superman's powers have fluctuated over time for a variety of reasons. However, for death battle, we take the characters at their best. Yeah, like how his breath is so powerful he can sneeze away a solar system Bio or blow or... air cold enough to freeze ghosts. Speaking of, his x-ray vision doesn't just see through walls. He can see through your own body and mind to examine your soul. Oh, and yet, he can't see through lead. 
that's okay though. He can just burn through it with his okay, face. Yeah, the, the since time he gets his power from the yellow that's, sun. His heat that was, I think that was the, the first movie, star. wasn't it? No, and no. If beams aren't enough, he can blast it out of his whole body for a super flare. Now, it that was from totally the new 52. Him, he's learned how to control it. Simply put, Superman's powers defy physics. My favorite examples of this are when he rebuilt the reality warping miracle machine from memory. Or punched Brainiac so hard, every version of him felt it through all of time. Whoa. Or when he gained 10 years worth of medical training through only 5 minutes of reading, and then successfully performed lung surgery. Nice. My favorite example is when he smelled brownies in North Dakota from orbit. Even okay. beyond his okay. powers, no. Superman is no novice when it comes to the intricacies of battle. He's trained in Kryptonian martial arts, which uses G, or as they call it, Shriar. He even got summoned to Asgard to fight demons with Thor for a thousand years. Superman can resist being erased from existence, such as tanking Darkseid's Omega Beams. Even Retcon and the Time Trapper, both of which hijack and alter timelines, can't touch him. Not because of his powerful mental defenses or healing factor, but because he's a cosmic linchpin in the greater metaverse. Timelines what? literally revolve around him. But let's address oh. the S-shaped elephant in the room. You may have noticed we've covered a variety of Superman eras. Superman and DC Comics as a whole have gone through multiple retcons. Golden Age, Silver Age, Pre-Crisis, Post-Crisis, New 52, Rebirth, yeah. and so on. Yeah. It would help to know it's which one is pretty the much main every. Superman, right? Well, they all are. Yeah, the latest reboots basically said everything in the main series is kind of canon, even when he had wacky powers like changing his appearance with a super muscular control. Ew. I guess he can still phase through almost anything, even people. Look, if you really dig into it, this isn't new. Plenty of characters have recalled events from supposedly retcon timelines before. Yeah, post-crisis soups did start as less powerful than in pre-crisis, but that was because of the mental blocks. Though he's not a complete oh. composite, there's so many other Supermen out there. Injustice. Future Superman, Big Robot Superman, Kami Superman, Dinosaur Superman. There's that a is bunch. the thing, yes. Still, this new canon has affected his abilities. For example, he and other Kryptonians can effortlessly travel through time. And while Superman's powers stem from the Earth's yellow sun, exposure to a blue star increases them even further. In fact, upon visiting a white star, he attained a whole new level of power. When that old baldy Lex teleported him to another galaxy, Superman just popped back up, saying space-time has lost its meaning for him. He really just said that. Remember, wow. Superman defies physics. Like when he used heat vision to restart the universe by making an all-new Big Bang. We've seen that his universe has a radius of at least 100 trillion light years, but we can calculate a more exact figure. The, the, the DC multiverse. universe is 15 billion years old and expands at 60 trillion light years per half second. This means its radius must be over 50 non-million light years across. Non Holy what? Fuck. That's 31 zeros, and Soup's helped make that happen. Well, about one fifth of it. That's still immense power, but if you want something bigger, here's the Anti-Monitor blasting Golden Age Superman with all the energy of the Antimatter universe. And then Superman, you know, punched him. So hard, yeah. it kickstarted another one of those reboots. Now, Superman does have weaknesses. There's kryptonite, of course, and exposure to red starlight can fade his powers over time. Not all at once. He has been able to move planets around while under a red star. So... And everyone knows Superman can't deal with magic, but it's more accurate to say he doesn't have any special resistances to it. He's defeated okay. plenty of magic users before, even Shazam. Superman challenges the idea that absolute power corrupts absolutely. I, 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 and now we call He's seeing that first episode of, of the Superman Lois. That, that's that's very, made. that's a, such classic vintage just to see that Unstoppable and incorruptible. Such as when he took on the World Forger, one of the most powerful reality shapers in all of creation who was in the sixth dimension crafting a whole new multiverse to replace the one clark calls home who's gonna stop him superman could and the forger knew it so he was trapped on a world with a sun so distant he could never escape or so the forger thought instead clark found the strength he needed to fly at that sun dip through a ton of stars KO the World Forger and shatter his new multiverse with a single punch. Because that's Superman, a simple solution to overwhelming problems. He's the kind of person to save a cat from a tree, answer Christmas cards from strangers, and tow hundreds of planets to a new galaxy all in the same day. What's not to like? Truth and justice has no better champion than the Man of Steel. All right, the combatants are set. We've run the data through all possibilities. 
It's time for a death battle! Please, let, let, let this be the final battle between us two. Oh, so the... It, immediately they get the, the battle gets started. Oh, <laughs> Dragon Ball Fighters. Okay, I love that. We'll finally settle who's stronger. <laughs> if you say so. I think that's technically that's a, that's a little suit of uh, the model that's from the game. I, I guess. <laughs> no joke, I got goosebumps already. Woo! Okay, this, this has to be the, the sickest animation. Jesus. The one inch punch. <laughs> Um, <laughs> well, I guess we can wish it back later. World made of cardboard. All right, I'll show uh, you just what, what, how what? powerful I really am. <laughs> it's just yes. uh, it's like a job force. Yeah, the the, the, the way he punches it, it just creates the other the other timelines. Okay, now yeah, I see that of the previous timelines. Yeah. Well, what do you think? <laughs> that was awesome! <laughs> nice suit! Oh, uh, thanks. Kryptonian fabric. My mom made it for me. <laughs> um, yeah. <laughs> Ultra Instinct. Here we go. The supernova. I mean, that's what I, I. That's what it was called, wasn't it? had me there that was actually pretty fun <laughs> yeah it sure was but I'll be stronger next time uh, I look forward to it let's go again you're on oh my god wow KO! that's it the final indisputable answer uh, who am I kidding? People are going to argue this one forever. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so many ways this battle can go, we, we will never get tired of it. 
Yeah, for real, Goku would kick almost every other Superman's ass, except for the main one. There's a lot to cover, so let's address the five categories most representative of this. First up, strength. Both could hit hard enough to break or make their whole universe, or right. take it in stride, like when Superman got smacked by the whole antimatter universe. At most, Dragon Ball's universe is 1,505 times larger than our own. But based on the DC Universe's officially established age and rate of expansion, it is 1.6 Vigentillion times larger, over a Novemdecillion times more than Goku's. At some point you reach a number high enough that it just doesn't mean anything anymore. Anyway, Goku's obviously gotten stronger since the Beerus fight, even yeah. by billions or trillions of times. He's defeated Jiren, Broly, Moro, and Fu. But even if we highball Goku by quadrillions or quintillions of times, the gap is just too much, especially with the World Forger feat. Not even heroes compete with that. Superman takes the edge in strength. But strength okay. isn't everything. Let's talk speed. Both are obviously way faster than light, but Superman crossed that mega-sized universe of his in seconds and flew faster than infinity. Makes sense. He can keep up with the Flash, whose speed is so ludicrous it's unquantifiable. Don't count Goku out, though. Flying across the entire afterlife in base form and outspeeding Eos's future sight takes some crazy speed. Fighting Zamasu as an omnipresent merged timeline also implies immeasurable speeds. That combined with instant transmission and ultra instinct could probably keep up. Maybe. Quantifiably, Superman is faster, but both are immeasurable. The safest bet here is to say they tie in speed. Especially Damn. when we look at skill. Goku's a martial arts master. He's definitely got better battle instincts. He wants to fight and is dedicated to his training, while Superman sees training as a means to an end. Superman's knowledge in pressure point combat and Kryptonian martial arts are impressive, but he's only used them a few times. It would be disingenuous to say he's an equivalent master at that. So Goku wins in skill, but not necessarily in experience. Don't get it wrong, Superman is not a mindless brawler. He's trained with Batman and Wonder Woman. He's even defeated martial arts experts like Cobra without powers. Goku has spent decades training, but Superman battled Norse demons for a thousand years. He's also astonishingly brilliant, like when he reassembled the reality warping miracle machine from memory. Experience obviously goes to Superman, okay. but perhaps less obvious is our last category, powers. Hakai, Spirit Bomb, Mafuba, Instant Transmission, God Key, God Bind, how does Goku not win with those? In Dragon Ball, Key is dependent on physical ability, so it's different from magic. God Key is simply pure Key, and magic isn't an auto win against Superman anyway, whose greater strength could break out of something like the God Bind. Mafuba and the Spirit Bomb would take way too long, and Goku's never successfully used Hakai before. Even if he did land it, Superman's impossible to erase from reality. Like, he's tanked over Mega Beams, which do the same thing as Akai. Superman right. can time travel, countering instant transmission similar ability from heroes. And regarding teleporting him to a red star, ignoring the fact that Saiyans can't breathe in space, though Goku's certainly tough enough to withstand a vacuum, instant transmission requires another person to act as a beacon. He can't just warp to any red star. Even if he did, Superman could simply fly away and find a blue or white star for a supercharge. And Goku could not pull off the same trick twice, as Superman could phase through his attacks. So, that's it then. Clark has too wow. many counters, so he takes the edge in powers and it's over. Well, I think there's something else. Goku versus Superman bridges the, a broader the battle rap. <laughs> It's more than just two characters fighting. For a whole generation, especially in 90s America, superheroes represented an unyielding status quo. Spider-Man, Batman, Captain yeah. America rarely change who they are or what they believe in. For a lot of people, that's tiring, and Superman is an icon of that. Then along came anime. There yeah. was a whole other world of ideas and stories for us sheltered Westerners to experience, and Goku's an icon of that. So while many see this as a debate between characters, others see it as a debate of ideologies and culture. And if that's what's at stake, who wants Goku to lose? Uh, you're sure you're not overthinking this? It's not our intent, but it does call into question what we're doing. How can people agree with what we take as fact when fiction relies on interpretation? Are we stripping characters of their importance by simplifying them to contestants in a vacuum of violence? And if so, then what's the point? Because it's fun, Wiz! <laughs> Damn it, man! There's more right. than one way to appreciate something! We're having a great time talking about awesome characters and slamming action figures together! And that's right. okay! Y yeah you're right. I'm just saying, no matter who you prefer, that battle was super, man. 
That's the worst pun. That is so worse. It's so lame. I don't see you doing any better. I do the math. The pun's your job. Well, maybe if you math as good as I punned, then Goku would have won. What is wrong with you? Oh, so did the season finale. Oh my god. Oh, Galactus versus Unicron. Oh, this is this is one way to, to go out with a bang like that. All right, so there, uh, there you have it, folks. This is the, the definitive win at last. So, look, I don't like to take sides on both... Goku and Superman, because they're both they're both good in their own rights, and you know it. You know it, it's still it's it's fun just just to see one of our one of our favorite characters of all time and, and, and have this uh, this square off, and that this is this is what you know brings it to, to everyone to all come together for this, and you know it just to, to, to see how you know of their strength and their feats and their abilities could overcome to uh, uh, to their opponents to, to how they, they can you know match up and well if goku could have used the spirit bomb it would have been over for superman but but it, but of course that the you know with the you know, uh, time traveling and uh, with the with a super speed and uh, so much the uh, absorption of the yellow sun that, that makes him a golden Superman. I think that, that that it would be a possibility that that Superman would overcome with it, and that the fact that that the Ultra Instinct Goku did make a, of a a um like a, an, an energy form of, of himself that, that, that would extend himself even bigger, but still it wasn't enough to, 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 to it wasn't enough to take down Superman. And can you, can you believe that, that, that they, those two want to go, go at it again? Oh my God. There's, it's just, there's no end to these two because they're just, they're, just, they're pretty much, they're, those two are pretty much alike, but be, that, but that's what it means to be as a fan, both comics, anime, manga alike. That this is this is what I'm I'm so drawn to it, and that's why I love it so much. And you know, for what it's worth, that it's still it, it was still pretty entertaining to just to see these two go at it once again. You know, give it a, give it at their best, and they definitely did put a good fight. And I still love the how that that you know the the beginning that that the, the fight just already did give it a head start and showing of uh, the the two uh, starting to clash each other. That's that's definitely that's from from Dragon Ball Fighters. And I think there was another part that that when Superman started doing the the doing the flight and the and the and doing the punches. That's also that's from Injustice. So it's still pretty cool. I, I enjoyed it, and I'm a little, I'm a little bummed that, that Goku lost. But you know what? I can't be mad at him. So it is just what it is, and that uh, I'm pretty. Yeah, I, like like Boomstick will say. That, that, yeah, like Boomstick will say that that that, 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 that people will still going to be arguing about this at afterwards of, of, of people who who actually saw this episode. So yeah, there, there's there's no end to it at all. There isn't. But if you guys enjoy that, hit the like button and also leave a comment down below. And I will catch y'all in the next video. So take care, guys, and peace.